Okay. Dura matter? Come Dura on, that's how you knew everything. Then the uh, middle layer is the... It's a Dura matter? No, it's... Arachnoid? Yeah. I honestly do not know this. That's the middle layer, and then the PMA matter is the innermost layer inside of this. So that brain is not going to be this color. What makes it this color? Oxygen? It is the meninges. Meninges. That is this color. Remember the guy on the video cut through that? I had to get it off there. Okay. <laughs> this one doesn't seem to have the... This one doesn't have the meninges on it. Is it more than one brain? We all have a brain. <laughs> Ingestion. If swallowed, do not induce vomiting. <laughs> Beautiful. Uh, I like how it tells you not to eat the brain. That's <laughs> awesome. So there's no meninges on this. So there would be a protective layer, but it's not there. So we have this. Don't cut yourself on that stick. Pass that around. Sweet. Touch it, feel it, poke it. It's so weird it. feeling. It Open up, you can see cool. the ventricles, what holds the blood. It's the brain blood. It smells that so blood nasty. Stuff that he was like taking out. Away. Is what that is blood? that? That probably is. I think that was blood. Those little tiny things are capillaries. Blood this is vessels. so cool. See what? the corpus callosum? The corpus callosum, of course, connects both sides of the brains together. <laughs> the bottom. Here it comes. You might the want to move this. There, the midbrain. <laughs> All that you'll That's have cool. to identify. It almost smells like a pumpkin. That's weird. I can't smell it. <sighs> Lucky. I grew up around a farm, what can I say? <laughs> it's true, I don't do pumpkin either. Yeah, it does oh. smell like a pumpkin. It does, doesn't it? See? What does a pumpkin smell like? Like a pumpkin. <laughs> like a sheep's brain. All right, you I have these little <laughs> things here in your kits. We didn't get a kit. All right. I want to share. Oh, I so you don't have to poke it with your finger, you can just touch it with that. No, that works better. Right. Open. Proby. But I like using my finger. So what we're going to do is that everybody's going to get a half, both sets of people are going to get a half of a hemisphere, or sorry, a whole hemisphere, and then we'll do the cerebellum in a minute. So the okay. cerebrum has two hemispheres, correct? Mm -hmm. Correct. Correct. So we have two hemispheres, and then we have the cerebellum, all do different things. See. We'll cover that in just a minute, what each one of them do. Are you videotaping the whole thing, April? Say hi. Yeah, hi. <laughs> Creeper. <laughs> We're just dissecting the brain. Hey, we so can we remove the cerebellum. Stars. And everybody has their own there we cerebrum. Go. Mm -hmm. okay. We'll come back in just a minute and di dissect the cerebellum. Mm. Put that in there. What's this? What is this little thing right there? Let's it. Is it? So what do we do with this? What's this? this? And it looks like it can come out. It right. smells. It looks like a vein. I can't smell it. Seriously, Put it in the middle there, April, so everybody can see on your team over there. Oh. Paige doesn't see. She's fine. I think Paige really needs to. She doesn't need to. She's excited about it. You can tell. She's just threw it with it. What's this little ball here? Is that the... The Inside pituitary? The the thalamus. <laughs> oh, it's a thalamus? This Gross. little one right here? Oh, on the back? She found a hair. <laughs> you found a hair? Oh, yeah, that's so sort of depressing. It's upsetting. It's upsetting. <laughs> Sheep's what? There is hair Sheep's in her brain. Hair. That is a hair. Is it an eyelash? Yeah. Probably. Yeah. Probably. Is it an eyelash? Yeah, probably. You would In the brain? Me. Inside the head? No, it's probably from the people who dissect the brain. Drop the hair in there. Yeah, I'm going to believe that it's the sheep. So here's the optic nerve, right? All right, so we have the different lobes of the <laughs> brain. Different we lobes. have the frontal lobe that's in the front, front of the brain. Right, here's a sparkle the on ours. We have the parietal lobe that is toward the front, <laughs> the temporal portion on the sides, and the occipital is in the back. So Occipital. The so occipital, ha <laughs> occipital has to do with the... Optic nerve. Eyesight. All right. Oc Same any thing. oc. Octom. Oh, all those kind of words, OCC, Optic nerve. has to do with <laughs> eyesight. All right, the temporal has to do with hearing, with just like taking pieces off. your balance, and then the yes. frontal is where you get your memory, your thought perception. There's all the sheep's memories. All that kind of stuff. <laughs> Sorry. So you have the different parts. <laughs> so if you look on memories. the sides of the hemisphere, you'll see the different lobes. 
the wrinkles on the top are technically called convolutions. Oh, 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 so that's like the occipital lobe right. right there? That's the occipital's so cool. in the back. Are you in the back or the side? Yeah, this is the back okay. here. I mean, it's the side, but it's the back side. So all that brain I just tissue, the hole in it. of course, the gray and the white matter, the gray <laughs> lacks the myelin that makes it white, so it's gray, gray and white matter. The convolutions, basically all the brain is a bunch of a tubes squished together. The uh, So all this, it looks like worms, right, it's tubes. just tubes? They're, they're, they're like they're tubes. Are we going to take those apart? No, they're not hollow, but there's stuff in them. But if you stretch those all the way out, it'd be bigger than a beach ball, kind of blown up. Can we do that? Uh, larger. No, we awesome. can't blow it up, it's dead. No, I mean, no, just no. tear them apart. Like, well, I want to yeah, We'll get there in just a second. Just hang on. on you, <laughs> so, we have the, now the middle, the middle indentation, the middle section that goes down between the two hemispheres has a name. Have you ever heard of that? Remember back in your days of biology in high school? Um, uh, no. <laughs> right brain, left brain. <laughs> That's one of the great homework assignment already. <laughs> How much we remember? Well, so no one read ahead in the book uh, at all. The separator, no. it, like the separations to the left and right. What are you talking about? I don't yeah, know what it's yeah. called. Yeah, this yeah, way it's just so. the right hemisphere, left hemisphere. So we know that the right side of the brain works the left, left side, side of, the of the body. body. All right, scientific proof of that. And the right side of the brain connects the. Left side all right, the damages to the brain can cause problems to your body. Mm -hmm. For instance, cerebral palsy. It's a effect that someone are you recording me seriously? Effect that <laughs> has on the brain <laughs> a disorder, <laughs> disease. And so the brain is affected. So the right side of the brain is affected, so the left side of the body is drawn in. Uh, it causes uh, murmurs and tremors to the brain called palsy. <clears throat> it causes the body to be able to function properly. They can still have quality of life, it does not function like what we call normal. People. Like on the back, you see the olfactory bulb. The what? I'm sorry, the front. You see the olfactory bulb. That's where the eye is connected to the front of the brain. Is that what that is? Probably? No, I thought that was the optic nerve. Optic nerve. Right here. That looks like the optic nerve. On the bottom, you see the hypothalamus of the hypophysis. That's this big bubble on the bottom. Yeah. Oh, the the medulla is toward the back. Medulla, remember the medulla oblongata is where uh -huh. all the nerves come together. All the yeah, the nerves come together in the middle of the spinal cord on the bottom. This doesn't have a spinal cord on it. Matter of fact, it'd be right over here. And this little piece over here. We have this toward the bottom over here. If you take this layer off, you can see it better. Those are basically his blood vessels. Oh, cool. Cool. <laughs> so we have... That's what these are. Look, we got blood vessels. That's awesome. We have the mandula. The midbrain is toward the bottom, which we'll get to in just a minute when we get there. All the nerves come together and they cross over and left and right side of the body, and that thing's affected. Of course, the spinal cord is in the back. And uh, then the is ventricles. Is that more of the um, occipital lobe? This is the um, whatever. cerebellum, so off the cerebellum. So, um, um, the cerebrum has the occipital lobe, right? Lobe, right? So, so that's the right. Okay. So cool. we'll cut this in just a second, and you'll see the fibers that come in together. But we have. The corpus callosum. Find the corpus callosum is toward the bottom on the inside. That connects the two hemispheres together. That's what I cut in half when I That's cut the This brain. part right here? Uh, I think it's toward the bottom, isn't it? Toward is it this right here? The corpus, that should be a white. Yeah, this white. Oh, this is right here. It kind of looks like, you know, kind of wavy. Got a, yeah, it's, it's kind of a thicker yeah. membrane about like the size right of it. Yeah. Yeah, right, right there. Sweet. It's right above the That's ventricle. I read it. There. I'm like cutting it. Like I you barely touched it. You have the bulb it. underneath of the corpus callosum. That that's the thalamus. We'll get to that. That minute, is. What that does yes. Okay. What that does when we get to it in just a minute. So you'll know if you have seen it. And then you have these hard words like the gyrus and the seleucus septum pollicium. I love that optic nerve. That is so cool to see. And then the different ventricles that are there. All right. So take your scissors. And Scissors? cut not long ways, but cut width ways and cut the brain in half. This way? Yes. Oh, yay. Go for it, Mayor. I'm going to videotape so you. So excited. You I'm going to cut the, my... my you, have to, you can use, a, use the scalpel, but I think you can do I'm it. I'm probably going to cut my gloves. Oh, that is so cool. This is so much fun, just saying. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Ew, brain. Ew. <laughs> Ew, brain. Did you just say that? Um, oh. Okay, that's not very... That's right. So everybody has their own piece now. Yay, I got my own piece. Wait. 
You got the optic nerve. Not there. <laughs> no, your sheep can't see. <laughs> My sheep they can't see. Okay. All right, pick it up, hold it in your hands. So you can get the consistency of it, squishiness okay. of it. Don't squeeze it too tight because you'll break it. Still pieces. looks like cauliflower. You can break those convolutions up, those Ooh, can we? noodle things in a minute. We'll oh, now? Eat. In a minute. <laughs> <laughs> really, Danny? Oh goodness, Throw it around. Sorry, guys, with brain on the one table. Person. <laughs> so you can kind of see it. You know, in your hand, you have the brain. All right, the human brain feels exactly the same as the sheep's brain. Well, the human brain is a little bit larger. You know, so cool. Each hemisphere would fill <laughs> each of these trays up okay. each. Uh, but you can kind of see the same thing with regards to that. So uh, on Mary's piece at the bottom, you see a little tube at the bottom right there. And not knowing what side you cut, that's probably the occipital right there. I can't remember, I can't see it quite, quite that well. But it's probably the occipital nerve. That goes to the eye. There's two of those. One goes to each eye. They cross over. So the brain, the left side of the brain controls the right eye, correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. So there's a they have to cross over somehow. So there's a crossover. Those tubes cross over there. And so that connects uh, to the brain. Now, when somebody has a sight problem, an eyesight problem, they, uh, it may have something to do with that nerve that she's holding right there. They can repair that nerve, or sometimes they can't at all. And somebody would be blind. But you have the occipital bone, which we'll get to in just a little bit. And each lobe is connected to, to the cranial bone. And you have the occipital bone toward the back of the head. You can take your finger, and don't do it with the gloves on, but you can feel a little hollow part in the back of your head. That's where you're. Uh, <laughs> your, 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 your <laughs> don't take your glove. <laughs> don't take your. Touch your hair with. Touch yeah, your hair with these gloves on. Your hands. Please and thank That's you. Just fine. We'll just feel yours. All right, let's find the ventricles. In your piece, you should have a ventricle. It'll be on the inside of the brain. It'll be a hollow place. Uh, I don't know if everyone will have them. Hollow place. That's where the blood will be able to connect. Like, uh, like right there is no hollow place. Right, you got one. You got there. a tear piece, oh, like right there. Right, you see, yeah, there's, there's right four there. of them, so you'll be able to see a little oh. canal where blood it's will be. Just a teeny there. tiny canal. Oh. Won't be that much. Just enough oh. blood to get in. Oh, I see. Oh. I see. There's that, a vein. Sick. That gives gotcha. your brain blood. We'll talk about the blood-brain barrier and all that mm -hmm. as we get to it. All right, now you have the cerebellum in your hands. There's a difference between, I'm sorry, you have the cerebrum in your hands. There's a difference, of course, between the cerebrum and cerebellum. They both have different purposes. Um, your ability to be able to do things without even thinking about it, like your heartbeat, your eye blink. You can make your eye blink breathing. on your own, breathing. You can make, you can breathe or you can, uh, different parts of your brain control different functions of your body. Uh, that's why your arm doesn't just constantly flap over your head. <laughs> <laughs> Scared has much, Danny? Function that controls your body. Every once in a while, there's somebody that has a problem with the different parts of the brain, and they're unable to control their emotions because of some either disease or some syndrome or some kind of problem with the brain, where your body reactions and your muscles either spasm or something from your brain. And also, uh, messages that are sent back and forth through your body through nerves uh, let you know. For instance, if you take the scalpel, and I wouldn't suggest it, but if you take the scalpel and run it across your finger, you'd have tremendous amounts of pain if this scalpel was very sharp. And you find that that's not the smartest thing to do because all of a sudden now you feel pain. And now there's some there's a reason why you feel pain. It's the body's messaging system to you let you know that, hey, you probably shouldn't have done that. Now it's going to hurt. And now you're probably bleeding all over the table because you probably cut, you know, And April probably passed enough. out on the floor. If you cut the first layer of skin, you probably wouldn't bleed that much. But if you cut the different layers and get down on the dermis, You'll find the blood vessels and you'll start bleeding. You cut down far enough, you may find an artery, uh, which would be, you know, bad for you, unless we got to <laughs> stop. And uh, that's why they, the tourniquets and all that kind of fun stuff. But your brain has the ventricles where the bot, the blood connects to, and it, so inside of your head, you've got the outside layer of the skin. You, you've got the, the different layers of the skin, just like you do all over your body, and then you have the skull, the bone. The bone is not as thick as a lot of your bones in your body. That's why you have to be careful with head injuries and things. That's why now if you watch a lot of sports, they're really concentrating on concussions because a concussed person may may not show any symptoms now, but 12 hours from now, uh, there's been you know people who have played the rest of the game and gone home and died in their sleep because of a concussion. So you have to be careful when your brain shifts back and forth in your head and it causes bruising inside of your brain. Just like your bones can bruise, your brain can bruise. Yeah, if you drop on the floor real hard with your elbow, you're going to find yourself bruising on your elbow. 
well, your brain can shift back and forth with such force that it can cause a uh, uh, begin to swell. That's why people have swelling on the brain. They have to go ahead and do and, and cut openings so it'll bland, drain out, and stick um, drains in there. When someone has a stroke, what's a stroke? You hear what a stroke of what does? Mm. It's a break of a blood vessel inside of your head, oh. and uh, it can cause someone to die because the mounting pressure, because your blood is leaking into your brain, and it's causing your brain to swell. If they don't control that blood uh, that's leaking from that vessel, you could die. Uh, there is aneurysms. That's where the blood vessel just explodes. There's no reason for it. Now, sometimes it's because of a sickness that someone has, or some kind of extra built up of you know, the things inside of the blood vessels, but sometimes people's blood vessels just break. And if they're not near a hospital, if you're out in the middle of the woods somewhere and you're on a tree stand and you have a blood vessel, a major blood vessel that breaks in your brain, uh, you pretty well die right there. And it's a blood aneurysm, uh, aneurysm to the brain. That's where a blood vessel has broken and you just bled out inside of your body. So you can bleed out just like outside of your body, you can bleed out inside of your body. Internal bleeding is most of the time worse than the external bleeding because you people have to go find it. You have to do a lot of different tests to try to find out where the blood is uh, leaking from. So you can have an injury to yourself if you ever fall down and hit your head or in an accident, uh, get yourself checked out because you never, sometimes uh, there's not nerves in that particular part where you don't feel it. Or well, the body has begun to go in shock and it is protecting itself from injury so you don't feel the, the injury to your brain. Then you'll go to sleep and you feel drowsy. Uh, sometimes people that are concussed, they'll feel drowsy and they'll go to sleep and uh, the doctors will have to go wake them up every hour to make sure they're okay, give them a little test. There's little things that they do. They make you, you know, tell what year it is, who the president was, you know, which, you know, what's your mom's maiden name, what color socks you wore yesterday. It makes you be able to think because they're trying to figure out if you have the ability for your brain to be able to do its job. Now, if not, then there's a major problem and your brain has begun to swell or the blood has leaked out different sections or there's an injury. In those cases, they have to do immediate surgery on you to make sure that uh, they can control the problem. So you have problems with the brain. We'll get that in just a minute in the notes. So we have the cerebrum in your hands or in your trays there. And then we have one other little piece. Of course, the human brain would be quite larger than the sheep's brain. This is a baby sheep. And there are places that uh, the, the, the pig that I have in my office and the different sharks, uh, they harvest the sharks from the water. They're not baby sharks. They're they're you know, sometimes full-grown sharks, the dogfish sharks. But these uh, sheep and the, and the pig are taken before they're born. Uh, that's what they call fetal pigs and fetal sheep. And uh, what well, they do that kind of thing. They aborted the sheep and no, the pigs. No, for science. For it's science. still abortion. Science. They're animals. I'm just saying. <laughs> Simple process. So throw that right we in. have <laughs> the spinal cord. You can kind of see as we'll open this up and pull this off a little bit, the inside of this is a real intricate network. Now this has been probably shelled for months and so all the color has gone away because the first thing they do is remove the blood because the blood is where all the bacteria are and so they get the blood out as soon as possible. So this has really uh, been sitting probably for a while and you can see the different nerve fibers that have come together uh, toward the bottom where the mandula oblongata is off of the spinal cord. And that, of course, is the nerve center of the brain. If you were to find your medulla oblongata and apply pressure to it, your extremities or your appendages would probably do weird things. They'd probably start, you know, Haley would probably punch Danielle right in the face and she wouldn't even understand and know why it would happen because your body would just jerk uh, because the different parts of your body are unaffected. So you can see the different parts here uh, in regards to this. So we'll put this here and you can kind of pass this around and you can get a feel of this. And pass that right around there and we'll talk more about which one of this is? I'm getting brain out of there. <laughs> I know. Ah, Mine's getting wormy. It's just going to be a brain day. It's all over. Come on. So the crossing part where the olfactory nerve is is called the optic chiasma. Mm -hmm. Big fancy word that means that's where they cross over. Mm -hmm. So the right side of the brain has to get to the left side of the body. So mm -hmm. different nerves cross over. A different crossing that's really cool. That's cool. It's like roughly. you know, you can see the spine, like like where it would be yeah. at. Nice. That's cool. The mandula oblongata looks like a uh, mini brain. Contains centers for heart rate, brain. blood pressure, respiration, helps you breathe. If you're running real far, and your body needs to have your heart speed up faster. It has to do with all that kind of. I didn't think so. <laughs> 
She's the only one not making this video. Making a video. All right. So we have this, but we'll pull this part off here, and we have the cerebellum. Cerebellum has to do with control, has to do with oh, uh, breathing, things that you don't think about. Now, when your body's having a problem breathing, uh, there's issues that you have either with your heart or with your brain or with the receptors. Now, your brain is the message center of the body, but your brain doesn't do all the work. The heart beats, it does his job, the blood flows out of the arteries, oxygenated to different parts of your body, and then returns to the veins deoxygenated. That, of course, has to do with your heart and your lungs, but the, without the brain's uh, job, without the brain doing its job, the heart would be able to beat because the, the heart gets its gets its orders from the brain. So the, we have the message, the, the, the main part, the central part of the body, of course, is the brain. It gives the message to different parts of the body to do their job appropriately. Mushrooms. Yes. That's what it smells like. It still <laughs> smells like pumpkin. I'm like, what is it? The consistency and everything, it's mushrooms. All right, so... Right <laughs> it looks like a little pinch. Cut this in half and give everybody a section. Cut it right down the middle. You got, anybody else got a scalpel beside me? Scalpel. Right there. I thought you can use mine. Yeah, that one's got All right, so cut it right down the middle. Don't cut yourself. Don't cut yourself. And give everybody half. You want me to give everybody half? No, give the other team half and you keep half. Oh, thank you. Look at that. Right, you need that a scalpel in your really hand. really look awesome. Take a scalpel in your hand. Don't cut yourself. This is very sharp, and God knows what kind of diseases are on this. If you have a scalpel, don't cut yourself with that. Don't grab it and turn we, your back either. Like yeah, I'm just going to let you scalpel. All right, so the best way to do this, take your finger, put it on top of the scalpel just like this, so you have control of the scalpel, and push down on a little bit, and that's how you're going to use the scalpel. Don't use it like right. this because you may break the blade off. So you're going to hold it like this. This is how you use the scalpel. All right, now pick up the brain, that the cerebellum you have in your hand, you with your other hand, and then you're gonna scrape it with the scalpel, and you're actually gonna pull the gray matter off of the white matter. So scrape it back and forth, and you can pull the gray matter off, and you'll see that the white layer is right inside the gray matter. So the gray matter doesn't go all the way through, you'll see the white layer inside there, but the gray is more predominant because it's darker. You can actually scrape off and see the difference in the gray and the white matter. Scrape that brain. We're gonna pat take out of it so we can put our crackers later. Ew! Ew. You're such a weirdo. Do you want to scrape the brain? I'm okay. Scrape the brain. Alright, <laughs> <laughs> right, now do you see the inside of the brain? Do you see inside the cerebellum? Do you see the same branching pattern? It's mm -hmm. branching more. Yeah. Branching more. So there's more receptors. Ew. There's more. That is pate. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty cool. It's like there's more veins showing up. That's pretty cool. Pate. <laughs> that looks like that liver pate that we get at King's Court. <laughs> you actually eat it? I do. Ew. I don't eat anything that I don't know what it is. You know what this is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> eat it. <laughs> don't make me hurt you. I've never had lamb. Lamb was good. Have you had a gyro? No. no. A little, little. A gyro? What's a gyro? I've never had a gyro. gyro. <laughs> Cut. Don't call it a gyro because it's, it's not a gyro. It's a gyro. <laughs> Everyone says it wrong. A gyro. <laughs> they know what you're talking about. That's the funny right. part. So you have the spinal cord on the back of this, and then you have the mandula oblongata, and then you have the pons inside this, then the midbrain, and then the actual connects to the cerebellum. Kind of hard to see that on this brain since we've mutilated as much as we have. Mutilation. You had one job. Mm -hmm. You had one job. I don't have to keep shaving it. <laughs> <laughs> You never said stop. Yeah, Simon didn't say. Didn't <laughs> Simon didn't say. say stop. <laughs> I now cut it half the other way. Like, okay. All right, you cut it one way. Don't cut it in your hand. Cut it on, on the tray. <laughs> Long ways, is what I'm saying? Yeah. Cut it on the tray so you don't cut your hand. It's like cooking. <laughs> I'm worrying him. He's like, no, no, not your hand, not your hand. Exactly, just like my There we go. Now you get half of that. So, is that what? Wait, what is this cerebrum? That's the cerebellum. C see, I was right the first time. Good job. Yay! Oh, got an itch. <laughs> <laughs> got you. Awkward. You're out of here.
out of luck. <laughs> that is pretty cool. I thought you were supposed to cut it in your hand. No. You got a rebel here, guys. Rebel. <laughs> What are you cutting apart? The spinal cord. That's the spinal cord. This is cord. the mandula of Angata. The oh. top here with the spinal cord on the bottom here. Oh, okay. You can kind of see the different halves of the spinal cord or goes down the spinal cord. And then the nerve fibers, they go down. So your spinal cord, of course yours is going to be a lot larger than this, but the spinal cord would go down to the backbone of the sheep. Uh, the humans are not faced this way. The humans are this way because you don't walk on um, four legs you walk on two, two legs so your spinal cord would go straight down and it would curve over and your brain would be sitting up here and your spinal cord going straight down should all go to my chiropractor with so you me can on tell you never man never did walk on four because the shape of his spinal, spinal cord, cord. No that's cool that. so it's more like this and the cerebellum sits at the top of it goes this way and then of course the eyes would be up here what but is in the sheep it's on four legs the blood probably blood vessels that have dried out I like playing with it Ew. You gotta find a positive in every negative situation, right? So your positive is play with the nasty stuff? They're just like mushrooms. There's a hair on here. There was like three hairs on What if I just pop this right in my mouth and ate it? Um, I would run for my life. I'd be very impressed. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be the talk of the year. You would be that one student. Remember, remember when about Danny about the history. brain? <laughs> I got it on video. Sorry to disappoint you. I'm too big of a chicken. I carried it. I didn't even sound every time. Ugh. I couldn't do it. Chickens walk on two legs. Oh, cool. That is one of the vessels that we pulled off the top of the cerebrum. Cool. You can kind of see that now. If you do it right, you probably would pull some of it out. It probably just split off. It just splits off. It's awesome. Can we take this thing apart now? All the little squiggly things. What are you talking about? The, um, the tubes. The hey. tubes. Oh, throwing yeah. brains at us. Can we? Yes. Sweet. See so if you can pull the, the brain parts out. The I got a blood vessel. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> I have another I hair. I, wanna... I think it's the same hair. Oh dear. The nerve. The nerve. <laughs> okay, funny. Yeah, I think I'm just mutilating this. I found a blood vessel. I want it stuck on me. There's like this little skin on top of it. Oh, this is cool. Oh, that's cool.